of other means, our services today. We are so thankful that you've joined us in this hour of worship and praise. Our Lord truly has blessed with this multi-generational service today by pulling people together and bringing about not only our singing, our worship, and our praise of our Lord. It is a great day. It is a day in which we lift the name of Jesus up. We're going to be in the book of 1 Samuel today, chapter 3, when God speaks. And when God speaks, it's always good for us to listen and to hear. And I want us to spend some time, not just on uh, a portion of a message, but the entire message of what's going on. Why are we not hearing God? What do we do when we hear God? And then, of course, what does that mean in our lives from this point forward? May God bless us as we opened his word together and as we look at an entire chapter, but especially those first few verses of uh, 1 Samuel chapter 3. Thank you for joining us.
some of these children would you stand please and help your children find you parents would you please stand or a grandparent I think grandparents would rather stand anybody here if you see one grab them <laughs> Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this multi-generational worship time together. We appreciate your presence here. We're very thankful for our children's choir, for our adults and our youth in this uh, together choir today as they sing in just a moment. 
We are thankful for all of our guests who are here, and you are more than a visitor. You're our guest, and we are happy that you're here. Please let, it, uh, let us have a record of your visit. You'll find in the pew in front of you some of those cards, and if you are a member, please pass those around and help us. Uh, you can drop that in the plate as it comes by a little bit later on. All of the announcements are found in our bulletin, and I just ask that you would read those and follow them fully. May God bless this time together, and may God's name be glorified and honored. Let's pray together. Father, we love you, we praise you, and we thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ. We worship you as these children did with their voices, and God, our choirs, we are thankful for, but God, let them lead us as we all give praise to the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Go ahead. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. Would you stand and join us as we sing together? Standing on the promises. Standing on the promises of Christ my King. Through eternal ages let his praise in the stream. the highest we shout and sing. Standing on the promises of God. have to move far today. Just turn around and greet those right around you.
Moses. We should always lift, lift his name high. We know that he'll never let us go. Would you stand and join us as we sing together? Oh, you never let go.
this opportunity to come to your house and just worship you. What a gracious God we serve, one that has given us the, the true gift of life that we may live forever. We just thank you, Lord, for your gifts and your grace upon us. We thank you, Lord, for our Savior and what it means to us to be covered in the blood. We thank you, Lord, for your promises and what the Bible teaches us. We pray, Father, that you give us the strength and the courage to be a witness for you every day and every moment. We pray, Father, that you give this, uh, indwell us with the Holy Spirit, that you will teach us from your word as you would have us to live our lives, Father. And Father, we thank you for the promises that you give us, that our prayers will be answered. Today, Father, we ask you to be with the ones that we know of, that are sick and hurting, Father. We pray that you touch them in a mighty special way, that you help them, strengthen them, <coughs> just give them courage, Father. Help them to overcome the disease and sicknesses that they're battling now. Pray, Father, that you just guide and lead physicians that are gonna be taking care of the ones that we know of that are gonna have procedures and surgeries, Father. We thank you, Father, for the ones that have outpouring of help that have gone to our neighbors in North and South Carolina. We pray, Father, for these families that have been affected. We pray your blessings upon the ones that have gone to help them. We pray, Father, that you watch over and protect them and lead and guide them. And through this work, Father, your word and your son will be shown to these people in that area. Now, Father, as we turn to our tithes and our offerings, we just pray, Father, that you bless this gift, bless the giver, and we pray, Father, that this money will be distributed in accordance to thy will and thy purpose. These things we ask in Jesus' name, amen. Amen.
Amen. All right, I have uh, four volunteers that are on their way down here now to help us as we introduce our message today. Uh, these volunteers have just graciously said they were coming. I see one. Volunteers, that's you, Travis McBride. Okay. Boy, you got to call them by name, don't you? Come on up here. Y'all get to stand up here. And uh, I'm so thankful for a multi generational service Chris for bringing this to the table for us you get up over here Travis I want everybody to see you we're missing one where's my volunteer where's your sister she left okay all right you're gonna have to stand in for her can you do that someone needs to <laughs> where did she go where'd she go your mama knows Is she behind me somewhere? Am I missing her? Oh, she's back there. Well, tell her to come on up if she wants to get up. Oh, okay. All right. You're it. All right. Here we go. All right. This is a multi-generation, isn't it? Don't, don't we have right here, we have the youngest, don't we? Okay. And then we have this youth up here. And then we have a young mother. And then we have what? <laughs> That's what you get. That's right. So we may have could have squeezed out a fifth generation, but we don't have four. Now, this is a brain teaser. Everybody likes brain teasers, right? Okay, I'm going to ask the question, and then when you get the answer, I just want you to shout it out, okay? Just shout it out as loud as you want. That's, that's all right, okay? All right, so you're driving a bus. You go six, uh, no, you go 12 miles. Let's get my numbers right. Messed up one time on numbers. You go 12 miles and you're going to drive south. And then you're going to turn to the west and you're going to go two more miles. You're going to pick up nine passengers. Okay? From there then, I want you to go two, no, you go three more miles on in uh, to the west. Then you're going to drop off four of your passengers okay all right here's the question here's the question they're gonna put it on the wall for you how old is the bus driver how old is the bus driver 15 we have a winner all righty you know I said you were driving the bus and you went here yonder and there Right? You had some help. Go ahead. Go, go sit back down by Ray. He'll tell you about it when you're back. All right. If you're driving the bus, how old was the bus driver? Right? Okay. Well, those senior adults, you know, we just work with them the best we can. Thank these volunteers and an unexpected volunteer. Now, here's our brain teaser what it's done. What, what happens when we are supposedly listening to God speak to us? We're focusing, we're looking, we're thinking about the wrong things. In this question, I asked them right off the bat, you're, or I told them, you're driving a bus, okay? So the question would have been answered by their age, every one of them, and 15 won the, won the challenge here. When we're talking with God and God is talking with us, the trouble is we're focused on too many other things. We're thinking about all of those numbers. How many people got on the bus? How many people got off the bus? We're thinking about going west. We're thinking about going south. And in all of that thinking and all of that doing, we're missing what God wants to really tell us. When God speaks, we're in 1 Samuel chapter 3, verses 1 through 21. I won't read all of it to you at this particular point, but before we get through, we're going to indulge in all of this particular chapter. 1 Samuel chapter 3, verses 1 through 21. Now let's go back when God speaks. We spend a lot of time in Sunday school. We spend a lot of time here in worship. We spend a lot of time saying or talking about listening to God in our private time of reading His Word or in our time of prayer, not just at a meal. 
And in all of that, most of us, believe it or not, we miss what God is saying. It goes in this ear, and a lot of times if we don't close this one, it comes right out that one very quickly. We miss the whole point of our Sunday school. We miss the whole point of worship. We miss the whole point of our private Bible study and our prayer because we have simply missed what God wants to tell us when God speaks. Beginning in verse 1. Now the boy Samuel ministered to the Lord before Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days, and there was no widespread revelation. And it came to pass at that time while Eli was lying down in this place, when his eyes had begun to grow so dim that he could not see, and before the lamp of God went out in the tabernacle of the Lord where the ark of God was, and while Samuel was lying down, that the Lord called Samuel, and he answered, Here I am. And so he ran to Eli, and he said, Here I am, for you call me. And he said, I did not call you. Lie down again. And he went and he lay down. And then the Lord called yet again, Samuel. And so Samuel arose, and he went to Eli, and he said, Here I am, for you call me. And he answered, I did not call you, my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, nor was the word of the Lord yet revealed to him. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time. He arose and he went to Eli and he said, Here I am, for you did call me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord had called the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and it shall be, if he calls you, that you should speak, or 